If you've ever wondered why companies sponsor motorbike teams and what they get in exchange for their money, I'll explain everything in this video. I'm just editing and I've realised I've missed three important things out. Number one, Moto Rapido have kindly given me this bodywork off my Ducati from 2018 and I'll give it away absolutely free to someone at the end of this video. Just keep watching to find out how. Number two, my merchandise is almost ready. It's pre-order only. If you'd like some, head to my website and I'll put the link here and in the description below. The second I get your order, I'll send you a glossy A5 card that will be signed in the post and then when your item does land, I'll ship it straight to you. Number three, people are going to start thinking that I'll do anything to get on a motorbike next season and I don't know, the next thing I'll be doing is trying to sell you underwear through an affiliate link. Joking aside, the lovely people at Kex have sent me some underwear and they sponsor people like Billy Bolt, Derek Chisora and the Lowe's Twins. If you'd like to get yourself a set, I do genuinely get a kickback of every sale and it will pay for my racing next season. So if you're interested, they're a great little stocking filler. Okay, that's it, back to the video. In my last video, I broke down the costs of a season's racing in the National Superstock 1000 Championship, which was roughly £177,000. And just to clear a little bit of confusion up, a lot of people then thought that I was going to start my own team. And although I would absolutely love to start my own team, trying to find £177,000 is probably unrealistic for me and very difficult to find in two or three months. So I'm not actually looking to find all of that money. If I can just find enough money to cover my tyre bill or to buy a new bike, that helps me massively because it means the team will have more budget so they can do a better job and I'll also be contributing something to the team which makes my job of finding a ride a hell of a lot easier. Sponsorship in racing has changed over the years. In the 1980s when my dad first started racing, Advertising worked completely differently. People were really interested in getting their brand onto TV or in a magazine. So if you were a cigarette company or you had a new chocolate bar, then an easy way to get it in a magazine was to plaster it all over the side of a motorbike and pictures would obviously be taken of that motorbike and then they'd be featured in magazines and on TV. Things have changed a lot in that respect recently, but the basis of it still remains the same. Companies put money into teams and the teams then use that money to go racing. What I managed to do was dig through my old contracts from when I was younger that showed a graphic of the bike and the leathers and it kind of explains exactly what sponsors get for their money. Now for argument's sake, if you need to find £200,000 for your season's racing, you've obviously got lots of different space you can sell on the bike. So your title sponsor, which will be the biggest sticker on the bike, it'll be the top part of the leathers, it'll be all across the garage boarding and the whole truck will have their logo on and it also dictates the whole colour of the team normally as well. So if you've got Cadbury's Boost for instance, that inevitably means that the bike's going to be purple. It's quite obvious that the title sponsor has to put in the most money into the team. And the reason they have to put the most money in is if they've got the largest percentage of the bike covered, then it effectively means you've got less space to sell to other sponsors to contribute the money to make up the costs. If you're looking for £200,000, it's more than likely that your title sponsor is going to put in at least £100,000, if not £150,000. In the example I've got here of my bike from 2011, this was when I was racing in Grand Prix, the largest sponsor was Fonica. So Fonica will put in the most amount of money and for that they get the largest section on the bike. The bike is then red and white because that was the colours of their company. When you look at my leathers, the top part of my leathers was Fonica. On the back there was also Fonica. So they've got the biggest percentage share of the bike and leathers. What you'll then find is normally a secondary sponsor. The secondary sponsor, if you're say looking for £200,000, you'd hope would put in the rest of the money or a large percentage of it. So they'll probably put in another £50,000 or £25,000. And for that, they get a slightly smaller space. In this case, it was Reva Cold. So they get a lower section on the bike, which is less visible. By the time you get to the sponsors on the belly pan, it might be that they're not actually putting any money into the team, but they might just be giving the team free oil or free travel or a free truck for the year. And obviously, although they're not putting money into the team, that is saving the team money effectively. So it still contributes to you going racing. If originally you needed £200,000, but £10,000 of that was your oil bill for the year, then if you're getting that for free, then you've knocked 10 grand off your bill. So that's normally how sponsors towards the bottom of the bike are factored in. Your smaller third tier sponsors, if you like, will then be found on the arms of your leathers, on the top part of your leathers. Normally how rider contract work, which I touched on in my rider contracts video, is that the rider is then allowed some space to sell for their own personal wages. Again, depending on the contract and the rider, 
that rider may be allowed two patches on their leathers, they may be allowed four patches on their leathers. If the rider's being paid lots of money, then the team will be less inclined to give them space to sell, as they'll need the space themselves to sell to pay the rider's wages. The last part of the rider and the bike and the team that you can sell is the rider's helmet. Now, generally in racing, the rider's helmet is for them to sell, although again, it varies from team to team. As well as the team having costs to run for the year, the rider will also have costs. Um, going to do a separate video on that and what it actually costs a motorbike racer to go racing for the season and where a rider sponsor differs to a team sponsor it then becomes a rider's responsibility to look after that sponsor and the way I do my best to look after sponsors is offer them lots of different things because each company is different each sponsor is looking for something different it may be that all they want is to be on that helmet as it's turned around at the podium that so many people love to hate that helmet positioning at the end of race weekends as annoying as it is for people to watch it really is important because some riders wouldn't be able to earn a living out of racing or they wouldn't even be able to be on the grid if it wasn't for holding the helmet on tv and showing people's companies that have helped them get on tv well i'm doing it now i don't even realize i'm doing it they can also get coverage across your social media. So it might be that they want a Twitter post or an Instagram or a Facebook post. It might be that they want to appear on a YouTube video. And again, this varies from team to team, but generally if you're the title sponsor of a British Superbike team or a MotoGP team, you would receive a certain amount of places in a hospitality unit for the weekend. The sponsor can bring guests along, entertain them for the weekend. It's something different other than a hotel conference suite for them to entertain guests and promote products and, and their brand through. This works on a sliding scale. So obviously the more money you put into the team, the more tickets and exposure you receive. And as you gradually work down the ranks to say someone that's just giving the team product for the year, they may get two tickets in a hospitality unit or five tickets in the hospitality unit. Another great thing that comes out of racing is companies networking with each other as lots of different companies come to the racing and there's such a variety of companies that new connections are formed that you wouldn't necessarily expect. A nursing home company that sponsored me met with another washing machine company that sponsored me and the washing machine company now wash all the linen for all these nursing homes. So there's lots of random connections like that that you'd never think would come about that come through racing. Companies like an oil company or a brake pad company, it's obviously beneficial for them to be part of a race team that's winning or at the front of a race as it means that their products are on show and it shows people that their products are worth using and worth buying. So I hope that answers the question of what sponsors get out of racing and why they sponsor teams. If you do have any questions, let me know below and I'll answer them. And for anyone that would like to win the carbon fiber bodywork, Whilst the advert's playing at the end of this video, subscribe to my channel, write a comment below, and I'll pick a winner in two weeks. Anyone that is already a member of my Patreon page will get an automatic entry into the competition, and I've also got my new TMAX stickers. They've landed, so I'll send those out to the Patreon members too. Thanks for watching. I'll be back very soon.